part of the division between black men and black women is a historical lack of a shedding of blood by black men for black women. Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo, welcome to my channel. Hey yo, hey yo, listen up, listen up, hey yo, hey yo, hey yo, the wireless woman. All right, hey yo, hey yo, hey yo, welcome back, Wi-Fi's, and thank you for tuning in to the conclusion of the ongoing conversation between myself and poet and spoken word artist Elliot Axiom. Go ahead and do me a favor on your way in and like this video. You already know the drill. If you have not already, you can also subscribe to this channel. the bell for notifications. We're going to head back into a class that is already in session. So here's the thing. I don't think that black men are the answer to the black female problem. I don't think your opinions on it are, we're, we're not coming to a place of Univision. We're still in division. So for me, I can give you what I feel like is, you know, the, the black female experience and acknowledgement. And I don't think it's what any black man want to hear, but you know, it, it's where we are within our community. But my the thing I take issue with is I don't think black women are going to be able to be the check and balance for black men anymore. I don't think that even our best summation of your character and who you are is going to speak for you because that black male image is something y'all have to own. And when people look at your community and what you build and the fact that, you know, our our children are going from the school to the pipeline and they're looking at the fact that our dollar only spends six hours in our community. They're looking at y'all for the solutions to that. I think everyone at this point now, you know, the one thing black men wanted was to be the leaders was to be regarded, to be respected. And so now I think that whole look is on you all. And I don't think that any amount of blame or assignment of responsibility that's being placed on the black woman is going to save you. It's going to prop you up anymore, any of that. So from your standpoint as a black man, what do you see that, you all can do, are doing, you know, the things we may not see. But I just want to give you that opportunity to speak to it because I, I can't. I think the only answer is leadership of black men. First, we have to do something which is called repay a debt of blood. Part of the division between black men and black women is a historical lack of a shedding of blood by black men for black women. Don't run out and talk about revolutions and all that. That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is seeing them seeing the majority of black men stand against. Now, understand the perception of black women from that point. You feel the script and you look at the uniqueness of the situation of the black man and why he could not shed that blood. Right. Okay. Does it make a difference that he couldn't? Yes. Does the mind of a black woman, many black women, see it as that? Maybe, maybe not. But coming back to the situation, black men have to lead. When I say lead, does that mean that only they can be in top positions? No. They have to, when I say lead, does it mean that more black men have to be pushing forward than black women? No. No. For those, but black men have to be a part of the leadership, and black women are going to have to accept them. I don't mean accept as in force down the throat. Mm -hmm. I mean accept as in I want to follow that brother. Mm -hmm. I want that brother to follow his vision. 
Mm. I believe that that vision is the right vision for the community because it's what I would do. And it's because we've had these discussions. I okay. know what he's doing. Right. You know? And and ultimately it comes to the vision of the people. Mm-hmm. What is the vision of the people? Mm-hmm. What is it that black people want and need to to move forward in our community right this moment? What is the answer? Right, but that's what we saw in the Black Panther Party because they were in those communities, reflected with those communities, working with those community leaders. Like we saw with Fred Hampton, he was out in the community working not just with the people right in his community, he was working with gang leaders. He was working with white supremacists. He was working with, you know, even what other people would consider undesirable. See, that's leadership because they had a vision that was bigger than what just benefits me. Right. And so therein lies the question. Therein lies the answer. Mm -hmm. What is it that's going to connect? What is it that's going to make black women say, Black man, you're doing all right. What is it that's going to make black men say, sister, you're doing all right? What is it? Because right now, I'll be honest with you, there is a lot of hate. And mistrust. And mistrust. And it comes from from everything from slavery up to today, it comes from everything from mistreatment by men to women. It comes from the way a lot of these men were raised. Right? I told you that I, 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 I talk about it. Mm-hmm. And I'm not blaming and I'm not blaming anybody, but we have to look at a realization that, you know, these boys are raised up. Yeah. And sometimes that piece Tell is, me about that. Tell me about your your My mother used to say that black women love their sons and raise their daughters. Absolutely. And that goes all the way back to them being ripped out of their arms as babies into slavery. Mm -hmm. That goes all the way back to mass incarceration Mm -hmm. and lynchings. Yeah. That comes all the way up to you can't play with a toy gun outside at 12 years old because somebody's going to pull up and shoot you. Right. Okay. So there's a different attitude when it comes to the way mothers raise sons right. and the way mothers raise daughters. Right. Okay. That is why you need a black male presence. You know, if you have a black film, that's why you need a black male presence to, right. to, to level things out. Right. Now, the system we know has been geared to remove that black man. Right. It makes less black men available. Those less black men. You have some great, dynamic, powerful brothers doing things. Right. And then, like anybody else, you have something that ain't doing nothing. Okay, but let me follow your logic down. You mm-hmm. said that black mothers, and we know that they're heading the majority. We got, we got tons of great single black fathers. Mm-hmm. We have tons of great single black fathers. I know many of them myself. Mm-hmm. Now, I come on this channel to represent a certain perspective and point of view, and I'm going to represent that. Mm-hmm. So I'm not going to say that my experience is atypical, but we know the majority of these households are household black children, all of them, male, females, are being raised by women. Mm. And I think that's where so much of the responsibility for the community keeps getting placed on women because they are present. Um, and I think that a lot of times the absence of men gets negated even by men. I think they underestimate the toll that absence has taken on the on the on the community, of course, because you got people you can blame. You can blame welfare. You can blame black women for putting men on child support and not letting them be in the household and all that stuff. But you hit on something. You said women love their sons. I think that's what's responsible for the misogyny that we see in the community. But they raise their daughters. So who then loves the daughters? The tenderness of the soul of a black woman and a lot of the determination comes from too, because they're taught very young that you have to be the leader. And you have to be responsible for you. And you have to be responsible for him too, the baby. There you go. And so we're not negating that. And that has been from way, way back when you right. can even jump slavery in the middle passage to, to the communal raising of children. 
Right. right. So I'm not going to sit here and say anything negative about the fact that black women have had this pressure and this weight put on them since that. Uh, yeah, um, but but that's the thing. Now we now this is me speaking for black women. I can do this now. Do it. Thank you. Thank you. We don't need you to raise us. We don't need you to chastise us. And this is the reason for which this whole submission talk is so difficult for us because like you said, our mothers raised us. We had an image of what a woman is, is, what that particular woman under those circumstances would be, but we didn't have anyone to love us. And that is what we're asking the black man for is love because loving us will put us into a position of being able to trust your leadership. But you're asking us to do something that we have never seen before. And in a lot of instances, in, in my episode on daddy issues, I talked about how we're supposed to trust y'all to do something you've never seen before in a dynamic that we've never experienced. So all that, the conversation we had about education, this whole family dynamic comes out of ignorance. We think we know because at least if nothing else, we saw we actually saw our moms do it. You saw them do it too. But you are asking us to trust your leadership following you to go somewhere we never see. You know, it's the final frontier. The shit is spicy. <laughs> it's my twelve stop. <laughs> so a step further, you said that these black families are mostly raised by women. Mm -hmm. So the male has been absent. Mm -hmm. Mother loving the son, raising the daughter. Loving the son. The son was her only man. The son was her only hope for protection or provision one day. So who taught this son how to lead, how to be a man? But now you have a generation of raised women mm -hmm. and young men who have to figure it out on their own. Now, I was raised, I come from a really big family. I'm the 13th to 14 kids. Nice. You know, they're falling here together. Nice. <laughs> but, you know, my mother, my father wasn't there. My father was in, in the South. And when I left to 16 years old, I moved to the South with my dad. So I've had the dynamic of being one of a large family mm -hmm. and then being basically an only child. Mm -hmm. And in that large family, and again, we, one, one of the effects was... And I know this is off topic. I just want to ask. I may edit it out if you don't like it. Was, did your dad marry? Was your dad married? To you want to go live with him, though? Mm -hmm. Even dad was saying So you've always seen just your mom and just... Well, your, just my dad, yeah. Gotcha. Well, he was for a while, but, but for the majority of the time that I was there, he was So... I've seen both of those dynamics. Mm -hmm. Now, as I was coming up, um, under my mom, there were also male influences. Mm -hmm. I had, uh, my mom had two best friends, uh, and they were like, oh, okay. So there was that male influence. There was cats in the street. Mm -hmm. There was community out there, you know. Mm -hmm. Not always good community, but there was community out there. And then when I came down south, you know, there was the example of my dad. There was more school, black male teachers, et cetera. So the black male leaders are there. Yes. They may not all be standing there screaming, not screaming, but pontificating or, or preaching, mm -hmm. but they are there. Mm -hmm. And the black female mm -hmm. woman, she is there. Yes. We have to. And we have to now make the decision and be intentional and agree. It's the agreement. But I think, like I said, the white male patriarchy comes in again because it's no different than, and I know sometimes I get abstract, but it's no different than White men coming to the continent and being like, hey, we discovered this. It's like, uh, excuse me, 
Uh, we were we were here and we were doing our thing. Not that everything that black women do is magic, even though here on this channel, the black woman is kind. Y'all are magic. But I just feel like it's a lot. I don't think we can close the gap of the division this way. I, I don't. I, I'm just going to speak for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not going to submit. And here's the thing. It's because the same reason why I get weary about spending black dollars in the black community. I need to see an institution. You know, that's for you guys to sit down and talk out and work up. I need to see where my money is going. Like, I don't want to be like funding Umar Johnson school for like seven or eight years and then we never get a school out of it. And I think that's been the disappointment because you brought yourself, you brought it up yourself that every time we've gotten to a precipice, every time we've gotten to a place and a point where we could have made this change or made this shift or made this dynamic, it, it's been black men that sell it out. Like even when we talk about Fred Hampton, it's the Bill O'Neill's that are the reason why this movement doesn't move forward. It's the men that, here's the thing, whoever paid the men that came in, that came in and shot Malcolm X with rubber bullets, <laughs> Whoever the the it's it's all an extension, yes, of white male patriarchy. But without our participation, you know, if we don't if we stop going to the if our men stop going to NBA games, stop going to NFL games, we give those players the ability the ability to unionize. They they have black power. If we stop, you know with our rappers and our capitalistic males, like we got Kanye West telling us Yeezys, but at the point that we say, okay, that's it, no more. And I and I know for a fact black women would get behind black men on this movement if they said this. At the point that we say, okay, no more, then we will have black power. That's what we as women are expecting you to give us that we can't get. We got education, we got houses, we got y'all, all those things that y'all say are making us not submit to you. That's true. That's real. I'm here to validate that. I'm here to say that I'm not going to gaslight black men. I'm not going to tell y'all that y'all know that's not true. We really do want to submit deep down the side. We just want a man that got, because I'm not going to pander. So I'm going to tell you that's valid. Like that's very, very true. But what y'all have that we don't collectively have that we can't do, we can't organize. This going to be real. And we don't have power. We don't have infrastructure. All men give that to their women. No. I've dated women who have made four times as much as me. I thought you did. And I have never had a problem with a woman's You're situation. not insecure like that. Okay, number one. <laughs> submission. You never had a problem with submission, we know. Submission. We know. But, but a lot of, and this is the other piece, and I'm going to touch on this, and some people may go someplace else with it, mind your business. But I think what, what black people, black women miss when we talk about the submission deal is that the power in the dynamic is in the submission. That's true. That's true. See, I know what you want. Right. So I know that that's valid. So, but on the, on the if it mainstream as well. Yeah. Because if if I am going to lead you, then I have to do those things that are going to keep you safe, protected, happy. Okay. So that's the thing. That's part of the things that 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 are, is being missed. Ultimately. I mean, you don't have to though. You don't, I don't have to, things. but if I'm going to be a good leader, right? That is the balance of power. That's that's the balance, and it doesn't mean I have to make every decision, right? So I'm going to take you back to something that I never did say, and I want to. Okay. I was in marriage counseling. 
I'm I'm going to bring something forward that speaks to my experience. Okay. And the therapist said, you know, sometimes you compromise. And then he said, sometimes you have to sacrifice. Sometimes you have to be the sacrifice for your relationship. He said, it's very easy for me to talk to people about compromise. But when I talk about sacrifice, it's a problem. But he said that he said, sometimes someone has to go first. And in that particular meeting, my marriage counselor said that to my husband of record at the time. He said, I see her doing the work that I've asked her to do. I see her doing the, the work. And he said, you're going to have to go first. So here's the thing. Like you said, it's a delicate balance of power that if you submit to me, I am obligated by virtue of your submission to do all these things. So you're going to do these things anyway. So all I'm saying is, first. <laughs> I hear you. I don't agree. And I'm going to tell you why I don't agree right now. I'm speaking for myself. Okay. But I've also seen this boots on the ground with a lot of black men. Because whether you submit to me or not, I'm going to go do my thing. This, I'm not married. Do. I don't have kids. That's yeah. why I still speak for myself. Right. But I'm still going to go work in this community. Mm-hmm. And I think. Me too. Right. And so somewhere along that, that road, we can meet up. Yeah. If we, if we have one vision and we're committed to the vision of the household, I think it'll bring about harmony. And, and I really believe that we are also caught up in the semantics of this. And this is yes. now kind of to end yes. this. Yes, agree. How about instead of worrying about submission, how about instead of worrying about leading, how about we just do? There was a movement a while back, a while back, called Sister, I'm Sorry. Have you ever heard of this movement? I have not. It was a group of black men who, and it was, when I say group, I don't mean five or six. No. So about almost in every state, large groups of black men. Yeah, we have the we have the ability. Who would meet with and speak with black women. Mm-hmm. And they would apologize to them for what other black men had done to them. Other men in general, but other black men specifically. Yeah. They would hug, they would talk, they would listen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So Accountability mm-hmm. is there, right? I agree. So we talk about leadership, we talk about submission. We talk about this person going first, we talk about that. My first question and my last piece I'll ask is if, if you saw that black man going in the direction of your vision, regardless of what it's called, it includes you. Right. Regardless of what it's called, would you follow? Or would you have to lead? Because black women have been having to lead for so long. Oh, yeah. A lot of times they say, you know, F it. I'm just going to lead. Yeah, I think, and and I want to be as authentic as I can mm-hmm. be. So I could just say, yeah, you know, I, of course we would. But I want to really take that in. I want to really, you know, think about it. Would we follow? Could we follow? And here's my honest answer. I can't conceive of it. Then you ain't there in lies. There in lies. For black women. I'm going to just be, if you speak just for yourself, of black women, but there in lies the reason why there won't be a resolution. Mm -hmm. There's still anger there. Yeah. But I think, like you said, in order for us to achieve any of it, we have to be able to see it. And I'll go from my side and I play devil's advocate as far as a black man who would use my privilege of no kids, no marriage to say that I need a woman who's going to be this, that, and the other. And I would say that the way that you feel is the reason why I can't dedicate myself to you the way that you want me to dedicate myself to you. Mm-hmm. And both of us are right, and both of us are wrong, and it's basically going to have to come down to you go first, or I go first, mm-hmm. or we both say 
Bump it. I'm tired of it. I'm going to abandon the community. No, I'm going to that direction. I'm going to go into the community. I'm going to do my thing. We might meet up. Or, sister, I'm sorry. I can't make up for it, but I apologize for it. I'm going to do better. Whether that better is here, whether that better is there, I'm going to do better. Well, brother, I'm sorry. And I am sorry because my lack of understanding, my lack of experiential knowledge, and my unwillingness at times to ask the question, to give place to resolution, you know, to, to rush to resolutions that are in what I feel like are my best interests, even when they're detrimental at times. I think that a lot of times women will say, a lot of times we, we as women hear like, you're too emotional, you know, or, you know, don't let your, don't, don't put your emotions into this. But I think that's been one of the greatest, cost of black progress which is that my inability to let my feelings be what they are has caused me to not be able to give threshold to your feelings like this is a conversation from a black woman to a black man a black mother to a black son um, because I've had this conversation with my own black son where I had to tell him, you know, I had to dead your emotions to keep you safe. I never wanted you to be reactive. I never wanted you to give place to your anger, your emotions, your depression, whatever it could be that would deter you that would weaken you from being able to protect and defend yourself. Mm -hmm. Because see, the same thing they accuse you of, they accuse me of. If I speak up, I'm an angry black woman. Mm -hmm. And if you speak up, you a dead black man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, we ain't we ain't doing too much more of that today. <laughs> yeah, it, it, yeah. <laughs> we coming to the end of that. But my thing and what I'm saying is my inability to access my own emotions to really experience my own emotions and at times I felt like you wanted to deprive me of that you know has we're we're locked into a toxic pattern with each other of not being who we really are because we live in the gaslight that is America that has defined for us who we are and now we have to play these parts and play these roles in order to have success in this system. So I would like to, if you're up for it, create a new, more perfect vision, union of what it looks like. You know, we referenced Fred Hampton who said we can't fight white capitalism with black capitalism. Yeah. We fight capitalism with socialism. Yeah. You know, we deal with patriarchy in this country and what it's done to everybody, you know. And I think it's not about these systems. I think it's about finding a way outside of these systems, you know. What if it's not socialism? What if it's not capitalism? What if it's not communism that can save us? We got to find that. What if it's not patriarchy? What if it's not matriarchy? What if it's something else? And I think that if anyone can engineer, because everything we see is based on what they came and took from us in our countries <laughs> and in our forms of government that we already had, our organizations that we've already built. Right. So I think now is the the best time with the technology, with, you know, crashing economic systems mm -hmm. for us to find a, a better, a new, a different, more perfect way. But I can honestly tell you, 
Like I said to you already, what's tonight? You can't do it without us. We can't do it without you. He says to I wouldn't want us to. <laughs> Understand that as you apologize for those things, let me apologize to you. On behalf of black men, let me apologize to you for not being able to protect you the way that you should be protected. For not lifting you up the way that you deserve. For not holding you down in the colloquial sense. You know I know what you mean. The way in which you deserve. Yeah. For not being able to change mindset and time. For not being responsible when I was younger. For not being accountable when older. Apologize for the times that I wanted to be there and couldn't be there because of things that I thought forced me to be absent. Mm -hmm. And I would just end it with apologizing for the times that I did not love you the way you deserve to be loved. Thank you. And I propose that we start start this all over. <laughs> we put those weapons away. And we as a people right. come together and create this thing that's going to be great for us. All of us. All of us. And? And? That whoever goes first. Whoever goes first. I have your back. I have yours. Thank you so much for sticking around until the very end of this episode. And thank you for joining me and Elliot on this journey that we decided to take with each other. This is really what we need in order to rebuild our community. I'm hoping that this discussion will begin to spur other discussions across the genders, across the aisles. But until the next episode, you might want to check out part one of this discussion. And if you haven't already, go ahead and click that link to subscribe to my channel. Until the next time, be unplugged, unbothered, and unleashed. You're not niggas.